Good morning and welcome to another British English live lesson. My name is Anna, Anna English to be exact. My middle name is English and I am in fact English. I'm broadcasting to you live here from London right now. So if you are here in the room with me, if you are watching this, then please show me your love and attention by giving me a thumb give me a little hello and tell me where in the world you're watching from. Now the reason you are here hopefully is because you want to improve your English and today we're doing some more pronunciation practice. In fact we're going to cover one of the biggest mistakes that I hear from students on a regular basis when it comes to pronunciation. We're looking at the difference between a diphthong and a long vowel. These particular sounds are always mixed up when I speak to my students, so we're going to clear that up right now. But before we do get started, I want to say a quick hello to everyone who's here. Thank you for being so patient and waiting for me to come online. Hello to my patrons. I've got you here as well. So patrons, if you have any questions or comments, then please feel free to place them here in the patrons only message box and I will respond. As always, I have set up some notes for today. These are the sounds we're going to be looking at. And um, anyone who is kind enough to sponsor this video with a super chat will, of course, be receiving these notes as a little thank you from me and the rest of the community. So before we get started, I'm just going to ask you all now, if you don't mind helping me out by clicking that share button and sharing this lesson with your friends and your fellow countrymen, that would mean the world to me. And already we're on three figures. So we have 102 people watching. Welcome, hi. If you are here and you're not already a subscriber, then please do press the big red subscribe button and the bell notification button. But without further ado, Let's get going. So these two troublesome sounds, really troublesome sounds. We have this diphthong. We covered this last week. Um, this is the O, oh, O oh, diphthong. And then the long vowel, or, or. Now this difference between these two sounds is troublesome not only for non-native speakers but also for many native speakers as well. So if you can nail this sound, to nail it means to get it right, if you can nail these sounds without any problems then you are going to be miles ahead of other English learners because your pronunciation will be so much better. So let's have a look at these sounds individually just to remind ourselves how these sounds are created. So we have the diphthong sound. Let's have a look again at that phonetic spelling there. So that's the phonetics for O. Oh, o. Oh. Let's have a look how it's created. O. Oh, o. Oh. I always imagine that this sound is coming from the back of the mouth. It's coming up and over, wiping the roof of your mouth and finishing rounded, vibrating the lips. Oh, oh, oh. Notice this movement. If you have a mirror nearby, then do practice this with a mirror to see that you're getting the same shapes with your mouth. Oh, oh, big to small. Let's have a look at the other sound. The other sound is the long vowel, or, or. Now this is a long and steady vowel. It does not move, okay? So this is rounded inside. The lips are rounded before we even start. Or, or. You'll notice there's no movement. There's no movement in the sound and therefore there is no movement in my mouth. Or, oh. I also imagine that this starts further back. The vibration is further back. So with the O, oh, we're imagining it coming forward to rest on the lips, O. Oh. But with or, oh, I want you to think about it sinking into the mouth. It sits heavy on the tongue. Or, oh. or, oh. O. Oh. Or, oh, oh. 
Have you got that difference? What do you think, patrons? Is that difficult? How are you finding it? I can't say clothes. I saw your lesson, but it's still weird. Oh, so this is the O sound as well in this word. Clothes. Clothes. But you have lots of other troublesome sounds within that word, Camille. Um, you've got um, the TH and you've got a Z at the end for the S. So you've got clothes. Clothes. Okay, so let me just highlight those differences once again. With the diphthong, O, oh, we start open. The sound moves forward and over. O. Oh. If you have a mirror, take a look. O. Oh. The long vowel, or, think about it vibrating at the back. A big space inside the mouth, like you have a marble in your mouth. A marble is a hard glass ball that children play with. But imagine you have a big marble in your mouth. Oh, 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 oh. And remember, no movement on or. Okay? Wonderful. So let's try and put this now into practice. Hopefully, you've got those differences down. So let's now try and compare them in words. So we have the word no, which is the diphthong, versus nor, no, nor. Let's have a look at that. No, nor, no, nor. How's that one for you? No and nor, no and nor. Um, some of you complaining about the connection. It looks absolutely fine from my end. It looks nice and strong here. Um, maybe try and um, refresh your browser, perhaps, um, or look at your connection. It might be on your end. But um, if anyone else is having problems, do let me know. Um, okay, so the next words that we have are go, diphthong, go, o, and go. Go, go, go. Um, if you don't know, go is um, the description of things that, um, like if I'm watching a film and someone has been um, has been in an operation and they're all cut open and all their insides are showing, um, or there's lots of blood and guts, then that's gory. So go. Um, so here we have go and gore, go and gore. Just make sure you're repeating these after me so that you can get these pronunciations spot on. Um, yes, President Gore, Vice President Gore, says Jana. That's a good example. Good. So then we have the word show, diphthong, show and sure, show and sure. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Show, oh, show and sure, sure. Think about it being back. Sure, show, sure, show, sure. Good, let's have a look at the next one. So the next one is prone, prone and prawn. We often, you'll often hear the phrase to be accident prone. It means that you're someone who tends to have lots of accidents. To be accident prone. I am accident prone, which means I fall over a lot. I hit my head, I stub my toe. I cut myself when I'm cooking. I'm accident prone. I tend to have lots of accidents. So that's the diphthong O, oh, prone, prone, accident prone. And then the little um, fishy, um, is it crustacean? It's a shellfish. The shellfish, prawn, 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 long vowel or. So prone, 
prawn. Prawn. When I was growing up, prawn cocktail flavoured crisps were my favourite type of crisp, my favourite flavour. What was your favourite flavour of crisp? Did you enjoy or do you enjoy prawn cocktail crisps? Hmm. So, prone and prawn. Okay. So the next words are bone, bone and born. Bone, hopefully you won't break your bones. And born, like a baby is born. Bone, born, bone, born. Let's have a look at that. Bone, O, bone, born. Bone, like the bones in your body, born. To come into the world. Bone and born. Bone and born. Okay? What is next? We have chose, chose, and that's a Z sound, chose, I chose you, I chose today, I chose the time, chose and chores. Chores are tasks that you have to do, like cleaning, laundry, um, going to work, it's a chore. So you chose to do your chores. Chose, chores, chose, chores. Let's have a look at that. We have chose, chose, and chores, chores. Uh, Jana, we say ho house chores, house chores rather than home chores, or just chores. I've got lots of chores to do today at home. Okay, we never say fall prone either. One of you said fall prone, it's accident prone, just accident prone. Um, uh, Raphael, my classes begin at different times every day. If you're wondering how you can make sure you join the live classes in future, then do follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I tend to always put an announcement out about live lessons and the times to expect them. They're different every day because my schedule changes on a weekly basis. So if you join me on Facebook and Instagram, then you have more chance of knowing when to catch me live. But also, if you press the subscription button and then the bell notification button, that bell notification button should tell you every time I go live so you don't miss any future sessions. So you could try that. Okay, so we have pros, or sorry, pose, and pause. Pose, to pose is to, um, like to pose for a picture, is to be still and hold a position so that, so that you look good for a picture. So you remember that? That's to pose, and that's the O oh diphthong, pose. You might call someone a poser. If someone in general just kind of holds themselves in a way that they're trying to look good for everybody else. You know, people who sit there eating dinner, like, hmm, sorry, what? And they're just holding themselves in a way to try and make themselves look better all the time. They don't relax. They are a poser, a poser, someone who poses a lot. So pose versus pause to freeze something. So if I pause the video, I stop the video momentarily to pause, pose, pause, pose, pause. Notice how those S's are sounded like Z's. Pose, pause, stop it. Pose, pause. Um, Guatam, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Guatam. Happy birthday to you. Congratulations on your birthday. It's um, lovely for you to join me on your special day. Hopefully everyone else in the room will also wish you a happy birthday. Um, some of you saying that I'm very quiet 
I don't know why, nothing has changed. Um, has anyone else got problems with the sound? Do let me know. All right, so where were we? We were on pose and pause. What else do we have that we can work on? Oh, this one I get problems with all the time from my students. Low, to be low down, so not high. Low versus law, law. Low, law. The law is the official rules that you have to abide by. Low, law. <laughs> low, law. Get low, don't break the law. Low, O, oh, movement, law. No movement. Low, law. All right. How is that for you? How do you find that? Um, okay, Mustafa, you're right. So and saw, that's a good example of these two words as well. In fact, I'm going to add those in. So, or even like this, if you're a farmer, you sow your seeds, or if you make clothes or you stitch things, you sew them. Many people mispronounce this word and say sue, but it's so. So, so, so. All the same. So, so, so. So, sow the seeds, sow your clothes. Do some sewing. Versus saw. I saw you. Or my leg is sore. These are the same. So, so, so. Saw, saw. Really good example, thanks for bringing that up. So, yeah, so, let's just have a look at those. So, so, and saw, saw, so, saw. Jana said, but in sewage, it's sue, not so. This is English. You know how crazy English is. There's no rhyme nor reason as to why we pronounce things in certain ways and then the sound or the meaning completely changes in other examples. Don't worry about it. Sewage, so. They're just completely different, okay? Um, as you know, there are lots and lots of comments coming through, so if I don't answer you, it's nothing personal. It's just that I haven't seen your uh, message. The best you can do is to try and repost the question and I might see it. Um, if you are desperate to get your message seen then you can donate to the channel, send a super chat which highlights the message on my screen so that I can see it and it stays highlighted for a long time at the top of the chat room so I definitely see it. Um, so you're free to drop a super chat and um, of course there's always an option of becoming a patron so that your messages are never missed because you go into the Skype group and all messages from patrons are responded to. So just bear with me. Um, there are things you can do to get your messages up and out, um, shouting at me so that I can uh, see them. But otherwise, you just have to be patient. Hopefully, I will see your message, okay? All right, let's carry on. So we have doe versus door. Now, a doe is a female deer, like, like, Bambi is a deer, but um, it's a female version. A female deer is a doe. Just like in the song, doe, a deer, a female deer, which is from The Sound of Music. Um, and then we have the word door, obviously, which we say quite a lot. So we have doe, diphthong, door, which you walk through. Doe, door, doe, door. Open the door. Let's have a look at the next one and then we're going to move on to some sentences. We have the word mow. Um, if you mow, you normally mow the lawn. So to mow is to cut the grass. If you cut the grass in your garden, you mow the lawn. Mow. Mow the lawn. So you have mow versus the word more. I want some more. Mo versus more. Mo more, mo more, mo more. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at that once. Close up. 
mo, mo, and more. Still, more, more. Um, do also can be spelt like this to mean um, the material that a baker works with to make bread like this, dough, they're exactly the same, dough, dough, or the expression that you hear from Homer Simpson, which is dough, dough. So we have dough, dough, and dough versus door, door. Okay? All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, the sentences where I have placed a number of these words within the sentence to see how you go when we're speaking normally. If you have any questions, let's have a quick look at those now. So do throw some questions in now. Um, if you're not already subscribed, then please do subscribe and press that bell notification button. And if you are here and you're finding this helpful, then please help me out by giving this video a thumb and clicking the share button and sharing this with some of your friends. So let's have a look. How many, how many likes do we have so far? Do I dare guess? I think it's going to be around 70. Oh, I was close. We have 66 thumbs. 66 thumbs up. Three thumbs down. What's that about, guys? Come on. 72 thumbs up. Thank you very much. Can we get that up to 100? Can we? Is it possible? Is it going to happen? 75. Slowly, slowly. If you haven't clicked the thumb, then click the thumb. If you have clicked the thumb already, don't click it again. You only click it once. If you click it twice, it unclicks. Um, while I'm just waiting for those thumbs to go up to 100, oh, 84, then I'm going to answer some of your questions. Um, clothes and claws. That's a good, good example of two more um two more comparisons of these sounds close and claws i'm going to add those to the list close and claws close the door um, add a clause to the contract close and claws um, we're on 94 94 thumbs up oh nearly nearly there um off top off topic question do you often use d-o-m-s in the meaning of delay onset of muscle soreness, like after the gym, and could you give an example? Um, I guess people who work in a fitness industry, physiotherapists, for example, may use DOMS. I have never heard it. I've heard of delayed onset muscle soreness. I've heard of that, but I haven't heard the abbreviation DOMS. So without knowing um, the technical language of physiotherapists, I, I don't know the answer to that question. General natives don't use it. Just the average person on the street, they don't use that. Um, I hope that answers your question. Anna, can you pronounce the word choir? To sing in a group is to sing in a choir. Choir, choir, choir. And um, let's have a look. 99 thumbs up. Oh, nearly there. Let's hit 100 and then I'll move on. Let's hit 100 and more thumbs down. What's wrong with you guys today? We've got four grumpy people. Four grumpy people who are not happy. I'm sorry. Um, would it be correct to say, I'm really stiff. I was at the gym this morning and I'm not used to it. Yes, that's absolutely fine to say that. Boom, 102 thumbs up. You guys are awesome. I love you guys an awful lot. Um, let's go and hit those sentences, shall we? So we've got, first sentence is, no one knows, nor would they care. No, so you've got the O here, no one knows, you've got another one here, nor, long vowel, nor would they care. So I'm looking at no, knows, then nor. O, O, or. No one knows, nor would they care. No one knows, nor would they care. No one knows, nor would they care. Can you try that for me? No one knows, nor would they care. 
no one knows, nor would they care. How is that for you? Easy? Hello in Italy. Thank you for joining. How are you? Um, nose and nose, Mustafa, are exactly the same pronunciation. So the nose on my face and she knows a lot of knowledge are the same. Nose, 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 nose. Who knows what my nose can smell? Flowers. <laughs> Silly. Okay, so the next sentence, if everyone is happy with that, is I'm sure the show we're going to is full of gore. I'm sure the show we're going to is full of gore. So here I'm looking at sure, it's the long vowel, sure. We're looking at the diphthong in show, show. Going, another diphthong, show, going, is full of gore. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not going to sneeze. It's good, I saved it, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure the show we're going to is full of gore. That's very odd. I've never sneezed on stage before or during a live broadcast before, but just then, because we were talking about noses, I just had this uncontrollable urge to sneeze, but it's gone now, it's all right. Don't panic. Tissues, tissues at the ready, but it's all right. Um, I'm sure the show we're going to is full of gore. I'm sure the show we're going to is full of gore. Um, I'm just going to pull up an actual dictionary definition of gore so that you have a clear definition. But as I said earlier, it's like when you see blood and guts. So gore, let me give it to you here in the text. Gore is blood uh, that has been shed, especially as a result of violence. So if something's gory, it means there's going to be lots of blood and it's going to be disgusting. It's gory, gory. Okay, gore, gore. Okay, let's carry on. So, um, oh, where have my notes gone? Where have my notes gone? There they are. Um, sorry, let me get this down. Here we go. So, she was, since he was born, since he was born, his bones have been prone to breaking unless he eats prawns. A very silly sentence, of course. Since he was born, there's your or, since he was, that's a schwa there, since he was born, his bones, diphthong, his bones have been prone, diphthong, to breaking unless he eats prawns. Unless he eats prawns. Okay, so since he was born, his bones were prone to breaking unless he eats prawns. Okay. Let's have a look at that. Since he was born, his bones have been prone to breaking unless he eats prawns. Good. Okay, how are we all getting on? Are we finding this easy? If so, let's move on to the next one. We've got, we chose these chores because we can't mow anymore. We chose these chores because we can't mow anymore. We're looking at this. O chose these chores because we can't mow any more. So you have the sounds there we've been working on. Chose, chores, mow, more. Chose, chores, mows, more. We chose these chores because we can't mow any more. We chose these chores because we can't mow any more. How's that for you? All right, are my patrons okay? How are my patrons doing over there? You're very quiet today. Um, good, okay. Oh, fabulous, we've got some uh, polyglots in who speak lots of different languages, wonderful. Well, I'm very privileged to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's do the next sentence. We're nearly there, guys, and then I'll be saying goodbye for the day. Uh, is this the last one? It is. So here's the last sentence. It's low to break the law by shooting a doe on your doorstep. Again, this is another silly sentence. Don't worry too much about the meaning. 
Just think about the pronunciation. It's low. That means it's not very nice. It's, it's low moral judgment. It's low. If somebody, if you do something like, if you cause trouble or reveal a secret in order to create um, distress or to create a problem, then someone might say to you, that was low. That was very low. That wasn't very nice. That's low. Okay, so here I've used low in this context. It's low to break the law by shooting a doe on your doorstep. It's low to break the law by shooting a doe on your doorstep. So those are the four words we're looking at. Low, law, doe, door. It's low to break the law by shooting a doe on your doorstep. It's low to break the law by shooting a doe on your doorstep. Okay. All right. So there we go. That is um, all the pronunciation practice that I had lined up for you today. I hope you find it, found it helpful. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask. I'll stay on for another few moments. And then once I'm... Um, once we've had five minutes, then I have to go because I have a Skype call with... Um, a patron, actually. So um, some of my patrons, some of you are asking how do you become a patron and what is a patron? Um, you can become a patron simply by clicking on the link in the description box below. It says, how can you contribute? So contributions, you can contribute by becoming a member of the Patreon team. The team is a group of dedicated viewers who really support everything we're doing here on this channel. This channel is all about helping everybody to become um, better in their English, in their pronunciation, in their general fluency. Obviously, I'm doing this as a full-time venture, um, but because I don't get paid, um, my patrons help me by contributing financially. Some of them contribute just a dollar a month, and some of them contribute more. And there are different rewards um, for the different levels of contribution because of course, my patrons really help me to help you. And without them, I couldn't do these lessons and I couldn't make these videos. So as a big thank you to my patrons, I give them different things. Some of them get Skype calls. Um, everybody gets added to this um, Patreon only Skype box where they can talk to me freely throughout live lessons and they will always be answered. Patrons can also send me messages on the Patreon page um, and they'll always be answered. Some of them get credited, some of them get shout outs, some of them I'll follow on social media, um, but all of them do help me to make decisions. All of them have more access to me and more of them um, get, all of them, get access to videos in in advance, so anything I upload they will see straight away before everybody else. So there's lots of benefits for helping this channel to grow. If you want to join, you can join, like I said, for as little as a dollar a month. It will help this channel hugely. Um, and all you have to do is click that link in the description box below. But of course, I know that not everyone can, and that's absolutely fine. I don't expect anyone to support um, anything that I do. Um, but if you do want to support and you can't afford to be a patron, then you could potentially contribute your language skills. So I'm looking to translate all of my videos into your language, whether your language is Thai, Russian, French, German, Dutch, um, Canadian. Do Canada have their own language besides French? Well, whatever your language is, however wonderful, um, unusual, um, yes, whatever your language is, I would love to have it on my channel and I'd love your fellow countrymen to benefit from your language. So if you can spare a few moments or a little longer, I need hundreds of videos translating. So I even, I even have correct the auto subtitles. Um, so if you contribute English subtitles, if you feel confident to, then that would be wonderful as well. So that's everything I need to say about contributions. Now there is a fantastic free audiobook which is great for English pronunciation. 
Down in the description box below, you'll see a link to it. If you are already an Audible member or a Kindle Unlimited member, then you get this book for free. It teaches you BBC English. If you're not an Audible member, the great news is you can sign up for an Audible trial for 30 days for free. And then if you, if you get to 30 days, then you can just cancel it. So go and check those out. It's a free book and free Audible trial. And there's loads of other free books you can get as well. So the links for those are in the description box below. Um, now I'm going to answer some questions. And then I'm going to say goodbye. I'm having some problems with streaming here. Um, okay, can you please pronounce these words? Unlikely. Shortage. Um, impossible. Photography. Photography. Useful. Dislike. Sleepy. Unusual. Cheerful. And kindness. Kindness. Um, I've been learning a lot from you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for your comment. Um, how did you learn all of these? What do you mean? I'm, I'm English. For those of you who don't know, I am English. This is my native language. Um, how do you pronounce clothes hanger? Clothes hanger. Clothes hanger. Um, it is terrible hot weather today in the UK. Yes, it is. It's very, very hot. Hot and sticky. Um, Canadians speak English and French only. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. That's what I love about this community. We all learn together. Um, Sky, I'll translate to Chinese and Malay. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who already contributed subtitles and translations. I really appreciate it. Um, how do you pronounce clothes? Again. Um, any more? How do you pronounce parameters? Parameters and variety. Variety. Um, how to pr pronounce sheet, like a sheet of paper. And obviously there's the naughty word, which I'm not going to pronounce, but this, the second part of it is it. It. Sheet and sh it. Okay? It's a difference in vowel sound. Um, how do you pronounce uncomfortable? Uncomfortable uncomfortable. Try to say Chinese, Chinese. How to pronounce occurs, occurs, occurs. Okay. Would you like to learn Portuguese? I'd like to learn every language in the world, but unfortunately my brain won't hold all of them. Um, I do love languages. But I think it's better if a language is um, going to be useful to you at the present time. So I will learn a language if I'm going to visit the country because then it's, there's a need for me to learn it and it helps to inspire me and motivate me to keep learning and be disciplined. Is it correct to say, when I was riding a bike, my chain came off and I nearly fell over? Yes, that is correct. How to pronounce croissant? Croissant, oh, a nice croissant. Tasty, because it's a French word, we say it with a French accent, croissant. How to pronounce perfume? I'm wearing perfume, perfume. Would you please clearly, um, would you please clarify the structure I'm going to be? Um, so if you have a look at the um, tenses videos, that is covered in there, okay? Um, this is a pronunciation class, okay? So is it... Is Z sound at the end of pronunciation of occurs? Yes, it is. Occurs. Occurs. It's a voiced S, so a Z. Alrighty. So if you didn't catch what I said earlier about the free audiobook, which is down in the description box below, um, because the signal was playing up, there is a free audiobook. There's a wonderful lady who's been working for about 20 years um, teaching BBC English, and she's offering her book for free if you are an Audible member or if you have a Kindle Unlimited membership. Now, the beauty is that even if you're not a member of one of these programs, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial. I use these, I have used these trials, I'm now a fully-fledged member. I think audiobooks are fantastic for learning 
because if you choose the right books, you can be listening to English on a regular basis, listen to some fantastic speakers, people like Stephen Fry, for example. Um, you can listen to some amazing books, some classical literature, some great new writing as well. Um, and there's lots of freebies on Audible once you remember. But you can sign up for 30 days you can have for free. So I thoroughly recommend it. And the links for those are down below. If nothing else, I suggest you go and listen to that um, pronunciation book. Um, I've had a listen to it. I think it's really great content. So pronunciation book for free with the trial down below. Go and check that out. If you're not a subscriber, I'll say it for the last time, please do subscribe and click that bell notification button. And if you did find this helpful in any way, then please click the thumb. We have 123 thumbs now, which I'm thoroughly appreciative of. And thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to do a few more questions and then I'm going to shoot and do my lesson, which starts in one minute. So quickly, accustomed, we pronounce accustomed, furniture, furniture. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, I'm going to have to go, guys, because my student is waiting. My patron is patiently waiting, so I'm going to go and see her now. Um, just a quick message to my patrons before I leave. I will be doing a prize draw this week for your Skype call giveaway. So patrons are entered automatically into a Skype call giveaway every month. And one of you, by the end of this week, will be chosen to have a 15-minute Skype call with me. So I will announce that on the Patreon page at the end of the week. All right? Okay. I'm going to go do my call. I will speak to you guys very soon. Take care. Have a lovely day. And goodbye. Love from London.